Good morning, everybody. Well, today is the last Sunday of the church's year. And as you already know, it's the feast of Christ the King. That feast uh, was first in introduced by Pope Pius XI in the year 1925. And I believe that his reason for introducing it was 1925 was very, very soon after World War II. It was a very sort of tumultuous time, certainly in, in Europe. And I think by releasing that feast, uh, I think the Pope had hoped that it, it would be sort of a, a calming, uh, have a calming effect, that people would become more aware of the fact that uh, Christ was the king of their hearts and he was also king of, the, of, their, of, of their nation. Anyhow, that was back then, and whether or not uh, the promulgation of that feast made that much difference, who knows? But nowadays, the whole concept of a king is one that's, uh, I was going to say it's obsolete. It's not actually obsolete. But we hear so little about kings nowadays because, uh, you know, kings as absolute rulers n no longer seem to exist. Uh, any kings that we have, I think they're mostly, they're mostly figureheads. So to look for real kings, you'd have to go back like a couple, a couple of centuries. And so you think about those kings who ruled absolutely back then, and you say to yourself, well, you know, how did, how did an individual become a king? Well, I think there were two different ways, obviously, and this is, not, this is not rocket science. The first one is the fact, of course, that if your daddy, if your daddy was a king, then when he died, or a close relative, uh, if they died, then you, you are sort of next in line. So that was one way to become a king. The other way to become a king was to become a king by, by force, okay? And I think a good example of that at the moment is what Mr. Putin is trying to do in... Uh, in uh, Ukraine, that is, uh, I'm not saying he's going to become a king, but I think he has sort of kingly as aspirations. And in a sense, you could say, thanks be to God, th those aspirations are not working out very well as far as, far as he's concerned. So kings, as I say, uh, very often were, were came about by, because by the use of force. So then you say to yourself, well, you know, Jesus the person, Jesus the man, became a king. And how did he become a king? Well, first of all, his parents, his mommy and his daddy, his daddy meaning Joseph, certainly wasn't a king. He was the opposite. He was, he was what we call a lowly figure, I suppose. And then Jesus had miraculous powers, but he certainly didn't use them in order to become a king. Rather, the reverse was, was, was what happened. And that, in a sense, is sort of a, the whole key to understanding Jesus. That is, that is, rather than using his miraculous powers to force the whole question of kingship, he did exactly the opposite. That is, that he, he, uh, he sort of put up his hands in the air and says, I, 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 don't, I don't get involved. Okay, I'm not, I'm, 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 uh, I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to, in a sense, uh, not, not, not make, it, make myself available for this. Uh, just think of the variety of things. For example, when, when he was, when he was uh, uh, brought before trial and he was, he, was, he was accused of becoming a king, we're told that he, he said nothing, okay? He just sort of, he sort of kept, kept his mouth shut. And think, think also of, about the time when, when uh, he, he, was, he was brought before, brought before Pilate, when he was brought into the praetorium, when he was, um, when he was uh, whipped and scourged, and again, he opened not his mouth. Think of when, when a, place of, a crown of thorns was put on his head, and again, he remained silent. As, 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 uh, as the, 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 today's gospel says to us, it, it says that uh, he was mocked, he was mocked by, by the onlookers, and again, he didn't open his mouth. Think of yourself in that situation. If you were being mocked by a bunch of, uh, of onlookers, how would you, how would you react? So the bottom line is, it's said in scripture that he was like a lamb. He was like a lamb being led to the slaughter. Or St. Paul says in, in uh, Philippians, he says he was obedient 
to the will of his father right up until the moment of his death. His life was a life of surrender, okay? He, he surrendered himself. And Paul says, because of this, because of his total surrender, uh, he obviously died on the cross, and because of that, he was raised up to a newness of life. So the bottom line is, through his surrender, Christ, Christ became king. Through, through his, his surrender, he, he, he overcame sin and he overcame death. If you look at the, the crucifix behind you uh, on the wall, it's Christ with his arms extended. It's the resurrected Christ. And in essence, in that instance, what he's saying, so what he's saying to the world is, I have overcome the world. I, 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 am, I am the king. And then the question which arises straight away, well, if he is indeed the king, what kind of king is he? Well, Pilate asked him that question. He says to you, are you, are you, are you the king of the Jews? Anyhow, uh, the, the ultimate answer that Jesus gave is that my kingdom, he says, my kingdom does not belong to this world. In other words, he's not king of a, a, a territorial kingdom or a spatial kingdom. Rather, he, he's king of people's heart, of people's hearts. And as he says himself, he's the king of truth, okay? So, so the individual who, who uh, tries to, to uh, live the truth in, in their lives on an ongoing basis is one of, is one of his subjects. Because, you know, uh, when you say that he, he is king of your heart, then the next question that comes up straight away, well, if he is, who, who are his subjects? Well, anybody is a subject who, who, does, who endeavors to do his will, not his own will, but the Lord's will on a daily basis. And so you have to ask yourself the question, you know, whose will are you doing at this point in time? Probably a lot of the time your own. So he, he, is king, uh, he is king of truth, he is king of peace, he is king of love, he is, he is king of justice, etc., etc., etc. All, the, all those virtues which, which he lived in his life, we are invited, we are invited to live in our lives. And are, you, are, are we perfect citizens of his kingdom? Well, I hope we are, but not, not completely, because at the end of the day, we are sinners. And that leads to the sort of final statement, if you will, that when we, when we together today, as we do every Sunday, we, we recite the, the Apostles' Creed, and one of the petitions in there, one of the prayers in the Apostles' Creed, it's not a prayer as much as a statement, is it says, he will come again, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. And just think of that for a moment, the fact that, that, uh, that there is judgment at the end of the day, not just for some people, but for all of us, that each and every one of us has to stand before the tribunal of God. And what's he going to our tribunal? tribunal of Christ, what's he going to say to me on that occasion? It's a, very, it's, a very, it's a very good question. Some people might be inclined to say, well, the Lord is all merciful, okay? And we hear that all the time. Well, he is all merciful, but even though he's all merciful, the bottom line is it's not so much that he's condemning you, rather you condemn yourself. Because he's not just a God of, of one chance, rather he's the God of first chances, second chances. He's the God of many chances. So, so you have every opportunity, if you will, to be, to be reconciled with him. And it is, it, is, it is important that you avail of, of one of those opportunities because at the end of the day, he's going to come for you as he's going to come for anybody else. And hopefully, if nothing else, hopefully, like the good thief in the gospel reading this evening, when the good thief says to him, he says, remember me, Lord, he says, when you come into your kingdom. And the answer of the Lord is beautiful words that hopefully all of us will hear at, at our time where he says, remember, this day you will be with me in paradise. Amen.